Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We have a, a great organization here in the St. Louis area that helps out with uh, health equipment that when you might need, oh, say you need a pair of crutches or maybe you need maybe uh, other equipment for a short term or maybe even a few more months than you expected. We have a great organization here in the St. Louis area called St. Louis Health Equipment Lending Program. Joining us in studio, Karen Lanter. She's the executive director for St. Louis Health Equipment Lending Program. Karen, thanks so much for being our guest. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it, Andy. Karen, can you share with us a story or two of how St. Louis Health Equipment Lending Program has made a difference for an individual or for a family? A lot of us also call it STL Help or St. Louis Help. That's kind of our nickname. Mm -hmm. But we've been making a difference for the last 15 years here in the St. Louis region. A good example would be the mother who of an eight-year-old, she has two eight-year-old twins, and it was last fall that she came to one of our warehouses because one of her children was born with spina bifida. Mm. They're twins, and one was completely healthy, and the other one had this challenge. During COVID, the therapy really slowed down, Mm. and he sat down, and he's, he's eight years old, and he was not walking. Mom, we love mom. She put him on the same baseball team that his brother is on. And she tried to figure out what to do. She was told by a therapist that the boy would never walk. He would talk about what the the equipment that he had received through insurance that had hurt him. So she went and tried to get something different. And they explained. They said, no, that's what we've got. She came to St. Louis Help and got standing walker for him with the pads under his arm. We've got video of him walking voraciously up and down back and forth. Now, this is a situation, it wasn't just us, it was mom's willpower, along with our providing the equipment to see that that boy was not in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Mm. I mean, there's just so much. You've got the elderly couple where one was always mentally fragile and then the husband was, was, would take care of everything. And then he gets, he gets Parkinson's. So then suddenly, both of them are in a very fragile position. They're able to live independently in their homes in their 80s. But then what about when one gives way? Then that delicate balance is broken. So St. Louis Help is there to help in terms of then being able to grab bars so they can not fall in the shower. There's even hospital beds for when someone comes home from surgery and they can't get up and down the steps. Wheelchairs of various kinds. The transfer wheelchair for getting for taking somebody into the car. We have lifts to lift people up off the floor when they've fallen. And unfortunately, that's what the, this family's facing because they've got the, the dad has Parkinson's now. So the wife, who's already very fragile medically, is they're grappling with what to do and they've turned to help. So between making the bathroom safe for them, I don't know if you know this, but Medicare and Medicaid or any public or private insurance will not pay for bathing equipment for people. So it doesn't matter how helpful it would be for them to be able to be safe in their shower. It's not available. It was deemed as non-required, not, you know, uh, mandatory. So therefore, all the, the bathing chairs and being able that one can stand up and hold themselves up safely at home, it's not available. In the, in the, for, the, for the restroom. So there's wheelchairs and walkers and rollators and all of it's free. And how do we do this? Is by getting people who no longer need these items to bring them to our equipment drive, for example, that's happening on October 21st, five locations around the St. Louis area. That's an amazing story of how you're able to meet the needs of people uh, who may fall into these situations unexpectedly and uh, are in desperate need of things just to make them safe in their own home. So that's really wonderful. So let's 
let's talk about how this how this happened. How did St. Louis help start? How does it how does it continue to meet the needs of the people in the St. Louis community? Well, it's fifteen year fifteen years ago, a lady named Laura Cannon. She is our founder. She met with Wheels of the World. They provide wheelchairs to working with individuals who are incarcerated to get them ready to go. And then they ship them over to seas for individuals in need. Well, she saw the need and she began collecting used medical equipment that nobody needed in her Mm. garage. And it grew. And now we have two locations and we served just over 2,000 people in the last 12 months. Wow. But we could do more. You shared with us uh, briefly a list of some of the equipment that you're able to provide to people who need that equipment here in the St. Louis area. I know you have a fall equipment drive coming up very soon on October 21st. What are some of the things that can be collected that you need at this fall health equipment drive? Yes, so true. The only way we're able to help people free of charge in what is a very difficult healthcare system to navigate I don't care if you've got the best insurance or you have no insurance. If you're somewhere in between, it's not easy. St. Louis Help is great at getting things to people quickly. And we need them when our loved ones are released from the hospital and they're still recuperating. And insurance is not necessarily as fast as we need them to be. Or will they even approve it? Or what's the deductible like? All those questions. So... The things that we need are many, but right now we have a real shortage of incontinence products. The packages can be open. We don't accept diapers because it's more of a nursing home items with the pull-ups of all different sizes for adults, extra larges, doesn't matter. We don't have as many rollators as we'd like. Hospital beds, we prefer the Invicare brand. Big, very important to us. Wheelchairs, as soon as we get them, we clean them and we fix them and get them ready to give away, it's gone. Boy, they're hot items. Wheelchairs of all kinds. We take pediatric equipment. We try to help children. So when, if you have a child who required home medical equipment and he or she has outgrown it, please consider donating it to our drive on October 21st. It's between 10 and 2. And it's coming to a community that's likely near you. Are there items that you that you cannot accept? I know you mentioned diapers. Oh, yes. Are what kinds of things should people avoid bringing to you? Anything that's like would be like a defibrillator for a heart. We don't take those complex medical equipment. We do not do the anything to do with blood, like blood with for. Um, somebody with with getting dialysis. Mm. So are the tubing associated with breathing? Oxygen equipment is something that we also do not accept. Unfortunately, we do not accept the CPAP machines. We're looking to see if we can get in a situation where at least we could send them off to where someone could re- refurbish them. And then, but we don't have the ability to safely... Mm. ensure that we would get them properly cleaned and maintained so we don't accept CPAP machines. So wheelchairs, crutches, those types of things, canes? For sure, canes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to say incontinence products again, bathing equipment, shower chairs. We've got a push on our website right now, and that's stlhelp, H-E-L-P, dot org. For people to, they they can click a link and they can send us bathing equipment through Amazon. We've got oh. items picked out mm-hmm. that, again, mm-hmm. we'll get them and then they'll be gone. But you know, the wonderful thing is, is so often people bring them back. And that's something else they can do at our equipment drive is bring items back that they may be received on loan from us. Something to, to, that's important to share is that we do not set a deadline. I mean, when you borrow something, it is a library system, so to speak. So we loan things free of charge to families, to individuals, to healthcare professionals. But we don't say that you must return it by such and such a date. And we don't call and we say, "How? when are you bringing it back? It is a completely on our honor system. And if you have a friend down the road who could use that wheelchair, pass it on. So 
that's a neat thing. We're, we're called the lending program because we want to, of course, close that recycling loop, right? If we get it back, then we can help somebody else again. And then they're not caught up in bureaucracy at some of the most vulnerable time of their life. We'll have people will come in. I, I, we, don't, we don't ask about money. Because these days with healthcare, so in other words, we're not going eight. You know, what is your what is your uh, income? Show us your W twos. None of that. Because the fact is, one could have a lot of money and not be able to get a piece of healthcare equipment that they need to help their dad after stroke get out of a bed. So you have a drive for equipment coming up on Saturday, October twenty first. When and where can we donate? Okay. So it's a Saturday, and it's from 10 to 2 on October the 21st, and we've got five locations. Super exciting. Abiding Savior Lutheran Church, and that's at 55 and Butler Hill Road. They're waiting for you to drop off anything that you no longer need. Clean out your closets, your basement. Tell your friends. Help us to help others. That's one location, Abiding Savior Lutheran Church. I think they call that, what, Concord Mm. or Melville? We also have New Covenant Community Church, which is in Chesterfield. So that's another church. There will be a van outside, a big truck that will have banners up. It's a quick drop-off. And just think you can clean out your closet at the same time as really giving life saving and the ability for people to be able to age safely in their home, which, of course, is priceless. We have got one at North County Community Church, which is in Hazelwood. We also have a location, a new one, St. John United Church of Christ on 5th Street in St. Charles. And finally, I want to point out, it's called the Care, the Care Service, formerly known as St. Joachim and Anne Care, Ser- Care Service in St. Charles, Missouri, is our last spot. Very good. 10 to 2 on Saturday, October 21st. You can bring out gently used health equipment to these locations to help out the St. Louis Health Equipment Lending Program. And if you're in need of equipment, same thing. You can reach out to the organization, stlhelp.org. You can find out more about how, bo- how you can borrow equipment from STL Help as well. Our guest today, Karen Lanter, Executive Director for St. Louis Health Equipment Lending Program. Karen, thank you so much for sharing with us about the drive coming up the 21st. Thank you, too. Have a blessed day. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live Uncommon.